Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So I finally made in the 3BB build, which is the latest build on the channel. Now, a couple things, there's a couple things that I really liked and some things I didn't like and some things that I wished were a little bit more of and let's get right into it. First, let's start with the motors here. Now for the motors, I use the iFlight Zing or Xing or Xing motors. They're the 2207-2450 KV. Now these come in many flavors. I chose this one. And uh, they perform really great. However, I expected more punch for some reason. I don't know why, but I expected a little more punch in them. I'm not saying that they're not punchy enough, but I just expected a little bit more. And that's something to be noted here. Now, there's also another nice addition to this. The motors were really, really smooth. And if you notice here, the magnets are as well very smooth. They're not really notchy. And that usually means less noise that the ESC has to deal with. And that is something what I really noticed. They were really quiet. Uh, the overall system was running really smooth and you could hear it. And you'll hear it towards the end of the video. I'll have just the flight footage with no music and as well as the DVR footage. So you can see if there was noise in the DVR recording. Now, moving down to the ESC. Now, the ESC is the Hollybro Tico 32 Metal 65 Amp, I think it's called. Um, 4 in 1 ESC. I have not done the bench testing and I wanted to just put it on a build and go fly it. And it comes with a low ASR capacitor. I decided to, actually I didn't decide to, I was lazy and I didn't want to put the low ASR capacitor because I didn't want to have to figure out where the hell to put this thing. So I said, you know, it'd be a really great first test if we do it without a low ASR capacitor. Honestly, I was expecting some noise, but to my surprise, there was almost zero noise, maybe 0.5% of noise. You decide for yourself in the at the end of the video. Overall, the, the ESC performed really well. The the You can hear it also in the video how smooth the motors were running, which was really nice. The Kikute F7 V2, this is the flight controller. There's two of them. You have the all-in-one and the flight controller. Now, the flight controller works great, 8K, 8K. It does have ICM gyro, which is externally soft-mounted with some kind of a double adhesive, and it's proven to work absolutely phenomenal. And again, it proved itself with this build. However, uh, a couple things you need to take note of is you will have to set up the scale for your battery voltage reading and you'll also have to set up the scale for your current sensing. Um, for me, the current sensing wasn't working, but again, I didn't set it up. I expected to have everything default just run, but that wasn't the case. Uh, the voltage scale that needs to be uh, it needs to be tuned to give the correct voltage 16. 0.8 volts or 16.7 volts was giving me around 17 volts. So that's something you're gonna have to play around with. I didn't have time, so I haven't even done it. I didn't even bother. I'm just watching my flight time. Two and a half to three minutes I land. For camera, the camera, this is the Fox here. I think Predator Aero Mini or something. I'll have it linked down below. I have everything linked down below. It was not, it, I just didn't like it. Um, and why didn't I like it? First of all, it does have a really big lens and it does have a pretty large field of view. Now, that wasn't really a big issue. I, I can quickly adapt to different fields of view, but the quality wasn't that great. I mean, I've been flying a lot of cameras lately and this one just didn't cut it for me. I, I really did not like the camera. But again, this is a personal preference. I didn't like the quality. I didn't like the colors, uh, especially in the type of day that I, I was flying in. So that's something to take note of here. Uh, the AT Lattel V2, I had a slight issue with. It's not really an issue, but I think it's more of a noob mistake in a way. For some reason, I could not switch the channel through the smart audio, and I was too lazy to come and start pressing the button. So I just gave up and I left it at 25 milliwatts and whatever the default channel was. But to my surprise, even at 25 milliwatts, I was getting farther than a lot of other VTXs at 25 milliwatts. So that was something really nice. And then again, this antenna was sent to me by uh, Banggood. I'll have a link down below. It performed really well. But again, this is not the full review of this antenna. Once I put it on uh, like a wing or something, and we'll do some long range testing. But overall, through the trees and everything, I was getting good penetration. Huge plus. The frame is really good. I really liked it. It was very nimble and stock Betaflight pids worked absolutely phenomenal. However, some people won't like this type of frame. And this is an old frame, but I really wanted to build it because I had it for such a long time and I just had it next to me. Some people won't like this frame for a couple reasons. There's no camera protection. Some people don't like that. And also this is a bottom mount uh, uh, frame here. Now, I personally also like top mount frames. When I look at all my quads, they're mostly bottom mount frames. This frame worked out really great because as you can tell, all of its weight is just right in the middle. So it has really good center of gravity and um, the CG on this is just 
possibly always almost spot on. So maybe that's why I had such a good performing quadcopter, other than flashing the latest be it beta flight and having the Kugute F7 with the ICM gyro. Um, overall, it was a really nice build. Uh, I will be doing session updates every time I take this out, just to see how it performs and if anything goes wrong with it, if a motor goes bad, how well it survived crashes. But one thing I will definitely change, I really did like this quadcopter, is the camera. I will definitely change the camera to something else. I think I'll change it to something like an FXT camera because those cameras have been proven in latency absolutely phenomenal. And not only the latency, the quality is superb on those. So yeah, I'm planning on switching the camera to an FXT camera here. And well, that's it guys. So I'm gonna leave you with the footage now. Uh, it's going to be just one of the flights with the DVR, no music, so you can hear everything and see everything for yourself. I'll probably put the first maiden flight in there. I was taking it easy just to see how everything was performing before going crazy and ruining it. And, well, that's it, guys. I'll have everything linked down below if you could check those out. Let's greatly support the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys. <laughs>